Good afternoon and welcome to the Friday edition of the Gateway Live Update. Coming you, to you from Gateway Christian Church in historic Woodbury, New Jersey on a beautiful early fall day. Clear skies, gentle breeze, and just a blessed day. Blessed to be here. I'm your host, Pastor Joe D'Amico, and I welcome you along on a short 15-minute Bible study and devotion time and a prayer during COVID. We've done this every day since COVID began, and we're going to continue. So join us. We're in 1 Peter chapter 1. Um, we've seen some really fascinating things in chapter 1 of 1 Peter, talking yesterday about what the prophets looked in the Old Covenant looking to find in the Old Covenant looking to Messiah Jesus and how the spirit of Messiah was in them. And that's where we left off. That's where we're going to pick up again. I'm going to begin again on verse 11. I know that we covered part of that yesterday. But 1 Peter 1, 11 says, They, these prophets, were inquiring what person or time the spirit of Messiah in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things in which angels long to look. Verse 13, and this is where we're concentrating today. Therefore, preparing your minds for action. King James, gird up the loins of your mind for action and be sober-minded. Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, three verses earlier, you talked about the revelation of Jesus Christ, the salvation that we're all going to experience, sotidia, and how great that's going to be. But now he says, the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation. There's going to be grace at the unveiling of Jesus Christ, the revealing, the apocalypsis. We have talked about that previously, how something's covered and it's uncovered. And that's what's going to happen at the revelation of Jesus Christ or the unveiling of Jesus. As obedient children, he continues, because of the grace that's going to occur on us, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. So you don't live like you said, because we're his. It's not that we're going to become his, but it's because we're his, we don't want to be conformed to the passions that we used to, the body lusts that used to control you, being controlled by impulses and even by addictions. That's how you stop doing that. You, you used to have that addiction to alcohol. You grab for it all the time. You wanted to gratify the cravings of your sinful nature. And so you did that. But you learned in the Messiah how not to do that, how to say no. And whatever the addiction is, you can say no. It could save you a lot of money and time with rehab right now. Learn to say no, just to stop. What you used to do when you followed those body impulses, and it could be anything. If you you find you're eating too much or you're doing any smoking or doing anything, you just say no to the flesh. We used to be controlled by that. But now because you are Jesus's, you don't have to. And that's what that Peter is trying to get to you and I right now in this letter. And he's going to talk about suffering, I know. But he talks about this and we don't want to overlook it because we do overlook stuff like this all the time don't we don't we overlook things that we shouldn't overlook that he says here and that's why i think this is such a marvelous marvelous thing as he said in verse 10 of the salvation that the prophets they they were so blown away 
by this salvation. And we still are blown away by the salvation. So prepare your mind, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and rest fully on the grace that is being bought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming to yourselves to your former lusts as in your ignorance. Back then, we were ignorant. Paul says the same thing when he preached in Athens. He said, in the past, God overlooked such things, but now he commands people everywhere to repent. Yeah, God overlooked it. But see, now that you're his, he's not overlooking it. It's time to get with the program, to follow Jesus, to live for the Lord. You lived for yourself long enough. Now, some believers go back, backslide. They go back. But God wants us to go forward. God wants us not to live for the flesh. That's what we did in our ignorance. But verse 15 says, But as he who called you is holy, you shall also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. So we come to this new topic of holiness being set apart. God who called you is holy. That means he's separate from everything else. And because of that, he wants you to be separate from everything else. God wants you to be different. God wants you to be the change agent. God wants you to be like him. And be, he says, because he is holy. That's what Peter quotes from here. He says, because he is holy. You shall be holy. Because it is written there, and we're at the end of verse 16. Because it is written a couple times in Leviticus. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Because I am separate, you're to be separate. That's all holy means. Holy is not a religious word. It means to be separate, just like God is. God's separate than every other deity, than anything else out there. And I am to be separate than the people in the world. But what happens is, and even with believers, they want to be like everyone else in the world. They want to act like everyone else in the world. So if everyone's drinking and cussing, they want to do the same thing. And, you know, God doesn't mind. Well, he does. God wants you to be holy. God wants you to be separate. He wants you to be noted by those people that you're one of those weird Christians. That's what God wants. And I hope and I pray that that's what you'll do. That you choose to be his. And Peter's going to talk more about that, about Jesus, how he suffered and he did it and he chose to do these things for you and me. And I hope that we can Again, look at things like this. Now, when he says, be holy, for I am holy, it, it has a double meaning. Yes, be holy, for I am holy. But it's also, be holy, for I am holy. It's an invitation. God is inviting you to be like him, to be separate like him. That's what God's saying. And yes, you can do it because he gives the Holy Spirit to empower you to do it. So yes, you can. Don't listen to your body that will lie to you and say you can't. God says, yes, you can. So take that. The Lord is the one who makes me holy. And through my relationship with him, I hear him say, not be holy for I'm holy, but be holy for I am holy. It's an invitation. What a great God that would invite us to be like he is, holy. And again, the word holy is the word that means separate, separated. That's all. Separate for him. Separate for him. I use the easy illustration of a church building and the sanctuary in the church building, the auditorium, where you go listen to messages. Usually, in the traditional sense, that room is set aside for worship to God. Now, I know in the Old West it wasn't, and I know different situations, but that 
building, that room is separated to worship God. And so it's not used for other things. And that's what the word holy means. It's separated to do that. You yourself are separated to worship God. And you shouldn't be common like everyone else and everything else. But be holy, even as he is holy. Be just like him. Amen? Can you choose to be like him? When you think about this, be holy, for I am holy, don't take it as, oh, you better do it, or I'm going to straighten you up. But instead, it's an invitation for you and I to be holy, for he is holy. So let's be holy for him. Amen. We're going to pray now, and I, I would encourage you not to tune out. Well, the study's over and a prayer, it's boring. No, we're going to pray against coronavirus. And if you have any other needs or issues, we encourage you to pray. Hey, you can post them. You can uh, inbox me and we will pray and we'll put it on our prayer list. If you want to be on our prayer list, inbox me also. We'll add you to our prayer list. We pray right now and we pray again this evening at 9 p.m. Every night, every seven days a week, we pray. And I want to remind you to set your alarm, set your phone alarm or your watch alarm and have it go off a little before nine. If you want, you can sign up for our prayer alert. That usually comes out about five minutes before nine, 8.55 p.m. And it will remind you to pray. So we're going to do that now. And uh, again, we thank you for staying tuned in and joining us in prayer. And Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your holiness, Lord, because you are holy, Lord. You are set apart. You are alone, God, and we worship and praise you. And we thank you, Lord. And we know because you are God alone that you can destroy and wipe out this coronavirus. Lord, we ask you to do it, Lord. Your people who are called by your name, who pray and humble themselves and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways. You said you would heal this land. Please heal it, Lord. Deliver us from this thing, Lord. Help us, Father, to bask in your grace and your glory and your wisdom and your power and your dominion and your holiness, Lord. And you invite us to be holy, Lord. May we choose to be holy just like you. Make us holy, Lord, as you said. Be holy, for I am holy. Make us holy. Separate us from this world. Separate us, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. Lead us in your direction. And bless us in this day and every day. We thank you, Lord. Lord, for all the other prayer requests we lift up, Lord. Whatever we're suffering with, we lift to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And again, thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with a Saturday is usually a rebroadcast. And you have to tune in to see which one it is. A rebroadcast of the Gateway Update. And we thank you for joining us. We'll be back on Monday, uh, continuing in First Peter. But don't forget, more important, is Sunday morning. We're in Acts chapter 19. Paul's miracles, crazy miracles that were going on. In Ephesus, join us, Acts chapter 19, on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. We're going to be here live. You can come. Just bring your mask. Come in. We have to stay distanced, of course, but we can have a great time. We have worship, the Word. And after we have worship in the Word, we have the Lord's Supper. You can have it live with us. If you can't make it, really, if you feel... You have COVID, we encourage you to stay at home, but you could join us here on Facebook Live, on YouTube Live, you can watch it on your TV, or BoxCast. Now we sent out an email, which is right down here on our Facebook page. If you're not on our email list, you can read that. Links you can click, things you could do if you wanna find more out more, you wanna find some past studies or old, even the old updates going all the way back to the end of February, early March, you could click and listen and enjoy. And we encourage you to do that. Um, we also, if you are able to give, you can click the Give tab and give secretly, uh, freely, 
and discreetly and safely to Gateway Christian Church. Thank you for joining us today. And um, we encourage you to check those things out. And until we greet you on the morrow, may God's richest and blessed be yours.